It really doesn't matter whether you're a horror movie fan or not. We all love the original Halloween, right? I mean, come on now. John Carpenter's take on the slasher movie genre of the late 90, the late 70s was purely influential. It has inspired numerous other movies from different years, you know, beyond that uh, that sort of slasher film premise. Like, um, but one particular movie during the 90s, which was pretty much the best, you know, post-Halloween movie, was uh, the original Scream. Because that film did not take the uh, slasher premise, like, totally seriously. It has, like, a satirized, you know, plot cliches and, you know, that sort of thing without, like, uh, fully parroting the, you know, scenes from other horror movies. Unlike, uh, you know, the stupid, scary movie franchise. And I could care less about those films. Uh, but, like, uh, other films, you know, after Scream were not so good. Like, there was I Know What You Did Last Summer, which was okay it was better than a shit sequel but uh it was not as good as scream or Halloween or any other like influential horror movie of of their time but uh we kind of need to face it though see the um sequels to the original halloween were not as good as a matter of fact three of of those movies, like three movies from that franchise have received the the most criticism out of all of them. Like, for instance, there was uh, Halloween 3, which is Season of the Witch. That particular movie was criticized for, you know, not having anything to do with the first two movies, the first two Halloweens. And like, uh, because like, uh, uh, Michael Myers was not in that film and, um, the plot had nothing to do with the other two. Like there was no, you know, slasher film elements involved because it was basically like a supernatural horror movie, you know, like, uh, about a plot to kill like, you know, children on Halloween using, you know, possessed Halloween masks. I mean, that film was okay. I mean, for its, you know, for what it was. Like, nowadays it has, like, a cult following to it, but uh, back then it was, like, severely criticized by both critics and audiences. But, like, nowadays it's, like, um, it's considered a standalone of the Halloween franchise. But uh, then there's the... Um, the final movie of the franchise called Halloween Resurrection, which, you know, you know, before Rob Zombie, like, uh, did his, uh, reboot of the franchise and like, um, that film, I thought that movie was terrible. I thought that, uh, it played too much like a, um, episode of a modern MTV reality show, you know, with Michael Myers in it and like all uh, Busta Rhymes' character was just you know aggravating like his character is in fact supposedly like supposed to be like the the worst one out of all the characters of the franchise and for, you know from what I read on like uh, you know the, the Halloween Wikipedia but anyway the um one that uh, received the most criticism of of those two that I just mentioned was Halloween 6, which is um, The Curse of Michael Myers. That was criticized for making, like, for because, like, um, like, before the uh, final cut of that film was released, they, um, the producers had to make, like, a, uh, like uh, a ton of like reshoots and uh, they had to cut out certain plot points to that movie because like uh, it, from what I read, it, it like performed poorly with uh, test audiences. So they had to like uh, make one edit after another. And so the final cut of the film has received criticism because it was too short and it has left out like uh, 
key plot elements. Like, I thought that that movie had a uh, interesting premise to it. Like, you know, the subplot involved like a, you know, a satanic cult, and like most of the movie involved like uh, like the origin to you know and the source behind like uh, Michael Myers is a uh, killing spree and is continuous rising from the dead but uh, it, it was just like executed poorly like it could have been done a little better it could have like uh, not played too much like a typical you know it played more like a ripoff than a uh, than an actual horror film like it, it could have had like a been a little darker but uh, one good thing though about the movie was um, there were certain songs in it that um, that I thought were pretty awesome like um, the movie featured a single from the band Brother Kane which is a um, hard rock grunge band from they started like in the early 90s but uh, this is like uh, their most well-known album, Seeds, and like if you have a copy of the uh, the final cut of Halloween Six, it features um, it features a thing that says like uh, it says that it features the single, you know, and Fool Shine On from the band Brother Kane from their album Seeds from from Virgin Records, which is their label at the time. Um, that was like the one good thing about it because, um, and like, I, um, I saw that movie like years before, like, I don't remember too much details about it, but I do remember that song played over the end credits. And I do remember reading the back cover of the tape that it featured that song in that movie. And that song was what was, uh appeared in the end credits, although it did appear earlier in the film, along with uh, other songs, like there was uh, Horses and Needles, and which is the first song off their album. There's also Hung on a Rope, and the other song is uh, 2020 Faith. So those three other songs were in Halloween 6, but uh, in Full Shine On, it was um, probably their most well-known song in that film and of their band of of this album altogether and um i really like this band they have not been around for a while they have disbanded after making their last album which i forgot what it was called but uh they have made two other albums but like i said this is by far their most well-known album in existence they have um long since fallen off the face of the earth but uh the um i did read that um the lead singer did a thing with um one of the guys in uh queensreich for a band called slaves to the system i actually have not heard that band until reading about this band see i recognized uh, like last summer i uh found this album at Goodwill and I did recognize the title of the band because uh, their song was in that movie and I figured you know this could be another good add to my you know other collection and um and Fool Shine On has um did make the charts back then it was number one on the um billboard rock charts of 1995 and you can find the music video for their song on YouTube. It is, um, it's pretty trippy. It's, uh, like, um, the, the band is like, you know, kind of like, like I said, they're kind of like, you know, 70s hard rock, like a combination between like 70s hard rock and, uh, 90s grunge. And they're kind of like, you know, you know, like Alice in Chains. You know, Soundgarden, Audio Slave, that that sort of thing. And uh, for those of you who are into that shit, I'd uh, I'd check this one out. For those of you who have not heard of it, just um, just watch the movie 
just watch Halloween 6 and uh, you can hear several songs in that film like I said but you can also find the other songs on it on like YouTube but like um, so far and full shine on is the one of the only songs on this album that has a music video like the other songs that I mentioned do like pretty much don't but you like I said you can listen to them or if you if you uh, come across this album at like a flea market or a good or a goodwill store, I would um, I would pick this one up. I mean, this was only for a dollar. Like the other albums that I've uh, picked up that I mentioned early in earlier videos, and um, I mean, I wouldn't say that they're not entirely. Like I wouldn't say that they're like obscure. But they are massively underrated. I would say that they are not obscure because they did appear under Virgin Records, which was a big thing back then. But um, but nowadays, like uh, you never hear from them. But you can possibly hear like um, and full shine on on like um, on Sunday mornings on like um, you know, early morning flashback on Q101 they sh they play music they play like a uh, 80s 90s rock like alternative rock on uh on during that time you know every sunday morning and um i wouldn't say that I, there's no guarantee that they would play that song because that because they probably don't even know what that band is, what this band is but um I would check this one out. This is, um, for those of you, like I said, for those who are into like, you know, you know, Soundgarden and all those types, you know, all the grunge and, uh, you know, like the Southern style, I'd, uh, I'd give this one a go. Like, especially if it's like for a dollar or just, or even just like $2. I mean, that's, that's fine as well, but, uh, but if you don't want to uh, spend too much money, you can probably like stream it. For those of you who prefer streaming, like I said, just uh, you know. But I do like right now. I do have like a physical copy of it, and uh, so if you find this anywhere, check it out and just uh, see what you think of it. That's pretty much it. Brother Kane Seeds. 1995 album from Virgin Records. Thanks for watching.